When a man left St. Francis Hospice, he went home to his farm where he kept zombie chickens. Tom Waits was there in a scarecrow costume, tending to the man's undead flock as Latin jazz crackled from an old wireless. As the music continued, it caused one of the entranced flock to pull out a jewel-encrusted penguin. The penguin, named Sean, curiously announced to the chicken, David, you're the best friend ever, much better than Kyle. They could hear some observational stand-up. It was Dave. The chickens were concerned at this point, as they knew Dave's feeble attempts at comedy was the reason he was third in line for best man at Sean the Penguin's wedding. Ignoring this incessant bickering amongst the chickens, the man continued to his barn to feed live chickens to the undead zombie chickens. A young lady named Christine and a cat called Totoro suddenly appeared in a cat bus, which is not in any way based on the copyrighted Studio Ghibli character. The man, who we shall call Norm, hopped on the cat bus. The bus then purred merrily down the lane. <laughs> nice! After a short while, the bus came to a sudden halt. Everyone looked shocked as they saw that in front of the bus stood Jeffrey Lebowski in only sunglasses and a bathrobe. Everyone shouted, Are you getting on? He slowly took off his glasses, then reached behind his back and pulled out a rather large photo of Mr. Richard Gere. Jeff looked at the sky and shouted, Why, Richard, why? Then the heavens opened and Richard Gere, displaying angel wings, floated down to rest beside Jeff. They both slowly faded away to a better place where Jeff Goldblum is king. But Jeff didn't notice, as he was already a zombie chicken pecking away furiously at the rotting corpse of Bruce Willis. The rotting corpse of Bruce Willis. But Bruce wasn't dead at all. He sprung to his feet, shouting, I've been looking for you, partner. I need your help finding my trousers. I last remember seeing them on the vicar. That's how Bruce Willis talks. The vicar, Southend's most notorious hitman, appeared in Willis's favorite chinos, booming, yippee ki yay this firing poison tuna in his direction. But the vicar didn't know that poison tuna was Willis's favorite dish. Willis pinned the vicar down and reclaimed his chinos. Simultaneously, Bruce's helium gland kicked in, inflating him like a toad and ascending him to the safety of King Cumulus's foggy breast. <laughs> Willis looked down at the vicar, riddled with gout in his bare limbs. He exploded into the shape of Ashton Kutcher's youth in a flesh soup across the tarmac. Meanwhile, the zombie chicks, as is their way, took this odd start to the day in their stride. The males displayed proudly in their quest for an undead mate. Taking flight, they caught the eye of some flying pigs who were wearing piggy wigs. Hello, said the suave Gloucester old spot. We're off to a banquet at Trotter Hall. Tell the bus to follow. But bear in mind, though, they don't take kindly to your sort, so make sure you bind RJ as much as you can when you arrive, or else you'll turn into Danny Glover. What's bind RJ? the chickens inquired. The pigs replied, it's when you bring a copy of Speed 2 Cruise Control on VHS as an entry fee. They don't accept cash at Trotter Hall. Meanwhile, Norm noticed Radiohead's Tom York outside of the bus, knitting his next album out of recyclable wool and biodegradable needles made from finest cat poo. Hello, said Norm to Tom, who then lectured Norm on the carbon footprint and the danger of charging retail for albums. A bird then gently landed on a tree branch, and Tom looked up at it and smiled. But Norm, enraged by Tom's preaching, ate the bird. No! Tom cried out. Not Colin the Raven! He only had two days left till retirement! Tom, in revenge, threw a special lentil-stuffed lemon grenade at Norm and danced his way onto the bus, fumbling with the grenade, not sure what to do or where to throw it. Norm decided to put it in his top pocket and relaxed, wiping sweat from his head. John Lennon entered, who turned to Ringo and said, I thought the magical mystery tour was weird. Where's Paul? That's an accurate John Lennon impression. Norm, confused and scared, used his magic wish stick to get out of there and suddenly appeared in the Pulp Fiction dynasty. Norm was sitting next to a pretty lady. He told her he was the famous Tony Duncan. Norm's flirting had a real class and panache about it, something he learned from Darius Dinesh. However, he couldn't hang around. 
During this flirting, a new norm came along on a bike wearing a yellow jersey after returning from Le Tour de Isle of Dogs. Just behind was Isla, his cousin. She thought he looked very dapper and dog whistled in appreciation of his success. My hero, she cried. But the new Norm was actually original Norm's evil twin brother. And he was half man, half baguette. Original Norm decided to wish himself away from this chaos back to the barn, where he watched the hit HBO series The Wire in his pants with Kevin Keegan. Norm slowly nodded off in a flashback of when he and Omar from The Wire were in nappies together. They held up a nursery using a gun-shaped rattle, emptying the tuck shop of all the milky bars. They fled in their red and yellow cozy cars. Milky bars and cozy cars. They came past the bloated Cockney Prince of old London town. His foul gastric bowel movements brought about a severe gas cloud of impending doom. To make matters worse, his local burger factory was brought to a standstill after more horse meat was found. The clouds then dispersed and water trembled. A big dinosaur foot squashed the Cockney Prince and Dr. Grant from Jurassic Park swung down, scooped up Norm in his arm and dropped him safely back at St. Francis Hospice, who provides support and care for those suffering with life-limiting illnesses. He stood there and simply thought, What a day! Panache, spelled P-N-A-S-H. Nice. That isn't even proper English. Maybe that's chicken lingo, I don't know. Oh, f*** me, this just is nonsense now.